Okay, so this is the installation and beginning of a uh, review on a Schneider Electric Xantrax C35 charge controller. It's a very robust, high quality unit. Although nearly all the charge controllers these days are made in China, obviously they vary in quality quite a bit. Uh, Xantrax has been in the market for a long time. They, they've been around for a long time, they're a respected brand. Uh, apparently Schneider, uh, Schneider uh, had bought them out and they're, they're now dealing with their stuff. It's a PWM charge controller, it has no pretense of being an MPPT unit, although this company also makes MPPT charge controllers. They're respected in the industry, but not necessarily the most popular because they're not necessarily all that cost effective for the specifications. Not much of a readout here. Uh, you, you basically have to interpret what color a, a, a light is blinking. Kind of reminds you of uh, late 80s, early 90s type technology on stuff where it only had a few buttons and you had to interpret and reinterpret what colors the light was blinking and how many times you got to press a button to mean something. The, so there's not a lot of controls, not a lot of features. It's a charge controller that basically has a couple of functions. One, it prevents overcharging of batteries. Two, it can actually work as a diversion charge controller. For example, if your batteries are topped off, it can change, switch over, do a diversion so that it simply feeds, let's say, a grid tie inverter. Although on the size of system, like I have now, I would probably be using a much larger grid tie inverter than this. So this one's going to get removed, used in a different project. The, uh, it, it's a metal housing, just like the C40, C60. The labeling is the same, but the C40, C60, I think the C40 is about this size. The C60 is physically larger. Um, actually, the C, they, they're physically the same size, but they'll have a cooling fin on there, I think. what, But I, I have a C60, it's just not here. I keep thinking the C60 is physically a little bit larger. Uh, next, we're going to open this thing up and show you the insides. But the other thing is, it, it does come with a pretty decent comprehensive owner's manual. This one I bought locally at Light Harvest Solar for $125. They're available online for you know like 90 plus shipping or 95 plus shipping or 119 I'm not going to begrudge a local guy is $10 or $20 profit when I can get it right away and you can get it installed instead of waiting around for the UPS or FedEx truck to show up uh, and his price locally wasn't significantly better than Amazon either uh, or I mean Amazon's price wasn't significantly better than the old uh, the local guy the other thing is you'll have to go and buy separately is some cable keepers for the, uh, the holes in these, the knockouts. And when you start looking at this, you start looking at it as being, you know, relatively conventional electrical stuff, metal housing, metal knockouts, like you would expect to see on something that's going to be built to code. Now, in locating it, you have to realize that you do want some space around it so that it can breathe okay this has breathing here i'm going to leave some space around it so that it can breathe I, there is no cooling fan inside the other thing we want to be able to do is reach this little reset button if it starts freaking out like this one did and uh needs to be reset what i've had to do here is pull a fuse or undo a wire here we've got a reset button so that that does help so remember in the installation you just want to leave clearance for a reset button. So next we're going to open this up and show you where the wires go. So here it is opened up. And the way these things are set up, it's, it's an expandable system. So when I pay $125 and I get just a box, I spend 5 bucks on these things, which got them at Ace Hardware, so I paid a little bit more than I would pay at Home Depot. In fact, I think I might have paid a lot more than I would pay at Home Depot. And what you'll see here is, you know, a single circuit board, but there's connectors for additional stuff. There's a connector for um, a, a temperature sensor, which can actually kind of deal with some stuff depending on battery temperature. And then there is a, an optional readout. It plugs in here, you'd run the wire to the outside, and then you can set this up, let's say, it, it can't be out in the rain, but it can be like out in a non-temperature controlled area. And then you would be able to have your readout inside. It comes on a cable. It looks like an Ethernet cable. You'd plug it in and 
and run your readout. So this is where you would plug some of that stuff in. I think this one's a temperature controller. This one's your 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 readout and your meter and all that kind of stuff. And you can see they're labeled uh, temp comp and then meter. Uh, if, if you can see see where that kind of says meter right there. And unlike a lot of other charge controllers, in fact, let's see if I have another one here. Yeah, I've got this Solar Land one. You know, it's relatively solid. It'll have positive and negatives right next to each other, depending on where they go. Uh, where it's positive, negative, positive, negative. Kind of hopscotches through there. And these are really good. They're just a 10 amp charge controller. What happens here is the same thing. And what I did is I color code these, right? Black is, is going to be negative on this. Uh, because I wanted to separate the negatives from one type from the negatives from another type, I made it a white, which on house wiring, white is negative, right? And then I used some relatively heavy duty kind of car stereo type cable on this stuff to handle the 30 amp power. But you'll see that it goes positive, negative, positive, negative, depending on what we're hooking up to. This is what we call the load or the light. So with all the switches here and all this stuff up here, I can actually control it from the charge controller and turn off the lights, right? Okay. So the Xantrex doesn't have that, okay? There, there's nothing on here that, that, that allows me to manually control those things, although there's some accessory switches and stuff that'll, that you can, you can get that'll do some of that. So these are both going to be red wires, but one goes to the battery. This one comes in from the solar panels. And then these are the common negatives, usually one to the battery and one to the, uh, the, the load. Or, or I'm sorry, one from the solar panels, one to the battery. I got to check through the manual to see if those are inter interchangeable or not. But it appears that most of the circuitry here kind of happens from the uh, it, it happens from the battery side. And what I we got to we don't really need to know all of the engineering, but I could flip this over and here we can see these white cables. Uh, this one appears to be a positive of some sort runs up these diodes. We don't hook anything up to those. If we hook something up, it's either going to be a plug or it's going to be one of these little screw things. It looks like it can handle up to a 6 aught cable. So, and there's some configuration settings in here that get a little tricky. But what you've got here is a little dial switch potentiometer so you can dial in your... Um, your panel volt, your your on off voltage ranges, uh, what you feel is going to be the cutoff, but this kind of depends on whether you're setting yourself up on a 12 or 24 volt system. We're doing a 24 volt system, so basically um, we've got a high and a volt, low voltage cutout that we're going to be checking. And the reason these things get a little different is because this may be set up on what they call a uh, a low um, a diversion controller which is um, the, the diversion controller basically if there's surplus power being uh, made it will allow that power to feed through to another device or another array or I mean or another uh, battery setup or something like that uh, I'm not going to be setting it up as a diversion controller at this time, although in the future I, I probably will. Although right now we're, we're not setting it up as a diversion controller.